Its abolition of society Its creation of a man with a heart of stone It's just the expected He loves being rejected And now he's all the world Welcome to Think. When all is lost, we will find you. Please leave your name and number, and a member of the team will be in touch shortly. If you require immediate help, please call 999. Hello, Miss Logan. My name is Rosie Barfield. I host the show on Bicken Hall Radio. I'm looking for a mental health professional to come on in and chat to a gentleman. He's having a bit of an hard time, and we have to get someone else involved. Please give me a call back as soon as you can. Thank you. Interesting. Hello, dear. Is that Rosie? It's Joyce Logan returning your call. I have received your message. It's loud and clear to me. I can be there this evening. Uh, what time would you like me there? Okay, I'll be there. God bless. Yeehaw! Are you struggling to get those doctor's appointment? Are you there finding it hard to pay those damn medical bills? Good. Welcome to Alabama Care, new to the UK. So, have you made the call? Yeah, she'll be here. She has the hottest accent. You'll love her. Oh, will I? What about Dave? Yeah, he knows. It feels kind of weird being sat here again. It feels... different. Yeah, it feels like we've been booted out of the school assembly. Do you remember that feeling? Sat there, just waiting for the teacher to come and give us a royal bollocking. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Yeah. No, you don't. I bet you were in the school choir and brought your own sandwiches in a lunchbox. <laughs> no, what's wrong with that? Hey, we recorded a CD once. Why don't you play it? Well, I could try and find I it. I was joking. Oh. Bick and Hole Radio. Better than sex. Most, probably. You're listening to Bick and Hole Radio, and you're in the greenhouse with Rosie Barfield, and yours truly, Neil Folding. We're on the fence right now with your tweets. So, we have at Tokyo Hair, who says... Bickenhole will host its first ever drag queen What's the Tea and Coffee Morning next week at the Cafetiere Bick Lane. Hashtag Chicks with Bix. Apply now, queers. Oh, I hate the word queer. What's wrong with it? Well, it's not odd, is it, to be gay or strange to want to dress up as a lady, as a matter of fact. I wonder if you'd still be of that opinion if the landlord down the Popeyes wanted to join in. That is the only exception. But even that makes me sound judgmental. It's a slippery slope. Let's just leave alienating the gays till next week. If there is a next week... What if there isn't? I'm actually not arsed. I should be, but I'm just not. In the Uber, on the way home from the pub last night, the driver... Victor... He said that he listens to our show every night on the job. He was actually lost because we weren't on. Are you sure he wasn't just lost? Where was the last time an Uber driver knew where they were going? True. Got me thinking, though. That's one guy out of thousands. Are we forgettable? I mean, will they even remember us? Well, if nothing else, this little experiment will be interesting. Oh, by the way... Eveson wants you to read this out. What's this? This is shit! I know. Yes, indeed. 
Welcome to another evening in the greenhouse. Apologies to those expecting to hear our dulcet tones last night. We do hope that our favourite octogenarian, Jasmine Johnny, filled the void you experienced in our absence. But alas, we were sent on a bit of a mission. Now, <clears throat> as you are aware, this week we have tried to help our caller Dave, who came to us at the beginning of the week. He told us he's been having a few issues. As much as we felt we could help, you, the listeners, didn't. We apologise for this. Here at Bickenhall Radio, we pride ourselves on our excellent standards. And despite causing upset, we have a duty of care to ensure that Dave gets the help he needs. Therefore, we have enlisted the help of professionals... And after the week's end, we will return to our normal format. After the break, we will be joined in the studio by Joyce Logan of Charity Think, Hall General's resident centre for mental health, specialising in acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT. Joyce will be talking about ACT and chatting to Dave very soon, back in five. Oh, no other fucking man makes me seethe as much as he does. That's a lie. Maybe one other. Who's that then? Your father? Who? That prick? Nah. Someone I used to know. Someone who needs to stay the fuck away right now. Okay. Right. You go. I'll call Dave. You're listening to Bickenhole Radio. The Martin Galliott Project prevents suicides, breaks down stigmas and supports families in the North West. The project has been funded by the National Lottery to deliver applied suicide intervention skills training to families at risk of suicide in the area. The project was founded following my father's suicide in 2017 and encompasses all of the support that we perceived to be lacking at the time. The Martin Galliott Project truly creates suicide safer communities. For more info, please visit galliahouse.co.uk. Welcome back. That was our pre-recorded message from Jess Gallia of the Martin Gallia Project in the Whittle. Recorded for us especially. Thank you, Jess. This week, it seems purely by accident, really. We've been focusing on mental health issues and we've been chatting to Dave, who contacted us on Monday. It's been quite a whirlwind of a week for us all. And we're joined on the line now by Dave. Dave, how are you doing, hon? Hi, Rosie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm okay. I'm glad you're feeling okay. And you're okay to do this, yeah? Yeah, fine. Wonderful. We're joined in the studio by Joyce Logan, who's kindly given up her own time this evening. Now, Joyce... You work for the charity Think. Can you tell us more about you and your work, please? It's so inspiring to be here. Thank you for your invitation and glorious introduction. Yes, my name is Joyce Logan. I have been in this profession for some time and have seen many faces. In a group session, we discuss our individual problems and work as a group to share experiences, thoughts and love. To help those who need it, and we do. All of us. It sounds like an incredible project. Now, I've been doing a bit of research. Am I right in saying that one in four people in the UK experience mental health problems, with one in six reporting mental health issues every week? That's high, isn't it? Very high, Rosie. It's incredible. Even though the number of people reporting mental health issues hasn't dramatically changed, our lifestyles, our technologies and the world around us has. We are seeing a concerning increase in self-harm and suicide. It's all about coping these days, it seems, or not coping. It really is very worrying. How did you get to where you are today? And correct me if I'm wrong. But people must put their lives in your hands every day. That's a huge responsibility. How do you cope with that? And forgive me for asking, how are you qualified to take that on? I think people should be transparent when offering help. I guess it can be easier to gain respect for those who can see through you and vice versa. Sadly though, respect is one of those words that 
appears very little in mental health. Attitudes seem to have changed. These statistics are there, but it is not reflected in funding, awareness or support from those who should offer it. All of which makes respect very difficult from all sides. I have suffered with mental health problems. As I grew older, I began to struggle to understand life and why things happen. And I lost respect in everything. Everything that had lost respect for me. How did you overcome that? You don't. <laughs> in my experience, you learn to carry it with you through the ups and downs of life. I say to my group, depression grows older with you. It lives in you. You feed it, water it, and like a flower, it, it becomes larger and more beautiful in time. It wilts, yet it returns. The best example I can give is Imagine you have to hold a cactus in your hands forever, taking it with you wherever you go, whatever you do. Difficult? Yes. Impossible? No. The solution? Learn how to hold the cactus less tightly. Do you know what? What you're saying is spot on. Learning to deal with a few pricks is easy when you know how. Speaking of which, we've received quite a bit of negative feedback this week. How do you keep going through such negativity and adversity? It's a problem I see increasingly in my work and it never fails to upset me and it makes my blood boil from time to time. The way I see it is that if you hurt, abuse or ridicule anyone who suffers with mental health issues, you are the lowest common denominator. And you insult me personally, which isn't a wise choice. You insult everyone because every single one of us hurts at some point, some granted more than others. Men especially struggle to cope with their feelings. Masculinity is a mask. Bob the Builder, with your loose attitude to women and your children, grow up. For your children's sake, if not for yours, you are covering. You will hurt others because you can't face hurt yourself. People fear what they don't understand. As we know, this is how things like Brexit occur. Encouraging those to feel when they are afraid to is what I do. If you know what it feels like to feel alone in a room full of your friends, you know how it feels. If you know what it's like to feel physically sick to the stomach with shame at the sight of your own naked body, then you know pain. You talk so passionately, Dr. Joyce. Oh, I am not a doctor. They won't let me be. Okay, um, we're going to take a break and we'll get Dave on to chat with you. That okay? Back after this. Only the crumbliest, flakiest radio. Pick and hold radio. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. You know, if you wanted to get anything off your chest, you can open up to me if you need to. Me? <laughs> I'm fine. That's what they all say. Welcome back. We have a very special guest with us here this evening, Dr. Joyce Logan of Think. And now we have another. Dave Hun, welcome back. Hello. Hi. Hello, Dave, dear. I've heard a lot about you from your friends Rosie and Neil, and you've caused quite a stir. May I be the first to congratulate you? <laughs> Thank you as well for coming back. It can be difficult. I just want to start by saying that what you are doing is very brave on a public platform like this and deserves acknowledgement. Please be as open and honest as you can. Are you currently safe, Dave? No thoughts of self-harm or harm to others at the moment? Uh, no, no, no. You've had these thoughts before, though? Have you considered ending your life, Dave? Yes. I think about death quite a lot. It's a concept I, I can't quite grasp. Death is a fact of life, Dave. Therefore, not an idea or a theory or, as you say, a concept. 
this may be a source of some of the issues you have. Have you experienced loss, Dave? You could say that. If you can, can you tell us in your own time and your own words, tell me what you think you've lost? Well, I've lost everything. I had a good job, but I lost that because I needed to give it up to look after my mother. She's disabled. Are you getting the right support with that, Dave? It can be very stressful. If by support you mean having to constantly fight so-called medical professionals just so my mother has some sort of dignity left, then yes. Some of us in this field still run efficiently, Dave. Our hearts are still in the right place and the reason we do this hasn't changed despite current issues affecting our services. I do understand your frustration, though, but we digress. Have you lost anyone in particular, Dave? Well, I recently moved here to be closer to Mom, so I've lost my friends. Not that many of them have really understood the way I've been feeling. It's difficult to discuss any of this with them. Now that they all have wives and lives, busy, you know. Friendship is important, Dave. You are more than welcome to join my group. We are a spirited bunch. And of course you have made friends in this very studio as well. Tell me, do you have a partner, Dave? Uh, no. I did. But it wasn't to be. In fact, it wasn't meant to be quite a few times. Have you had a long history of non-commitment then? I don't think it's a commitment issue. In fact, I think I wear my heart openly on my sleeve for whoever wants to peg at it when it comes to love. I have been hurt by women who don't understand my depression. One actually said to me, she wasn't going to be my shrink. You know, it's funny. I can't recall asking her to be. I guess. I haven't always been like that, though. Yeah, I've made mistakes. Not been proud of my actions. I was acting out, I guess. Sounds to me like you are afraid of being on your own. Would you agree? Absolutely. We'll revisit that again, but is there anyone else you've lost, Dave? I guess I'd have to say... myself, really. I've lost... me. I wondered when you were going to start talking about you, Dave. What you feel and what you think. You do seem lost. Those who struggle to talk about themselves often have a lot they need to say. The same works in reverse. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not that I interesting. May I, Dr. Joyce? Dave, you have caught attention this week and you've divided an entire listener base. You have the whole hull hooked, my friends. Indeed, little victories are still victories, Dave. Now, going back... You said that you feel you've lost you. What's missing in you, Dave? Oh boy. Well, it's tricky to um, get it all out, really, but I'll give it a go. <clears throat> About eight years ago, I had a good job, a flat, a girlfriend. Life seem to be going somewhere for want. What everyone wants, I guess. I was comfortable. Well, at least I pretended I was. My, my partner was a musician, a singer. She played gigs locally, went in for music competitions. 
etc. And I wrote songs for her. We were no Lennon and McCartney, but I tried to put these feelings I had into the songs. I wrote about us in an idealised sort of way. She had no idea. She'd go and play these songs about us whilst I sat at home waiting for her to come home. She didn't like me being at her gigs. I made her nervous. My life soon started to fall apart when I couldn't share her successes with her, attend events with her, or even be with her as she was just so busy all the time. That's when I truly felt lost. I spent most evenings alone, and there's nothing worse than being alone and bored. The mind wanders. My mind turned against me. I tried to tell her. Hell, I wrote how I felt in songs for her in the hope I'd get through. But the songs were awful. You know what guys are like in expressing their thoughts? I found myself getting angrier and less involved in the relationship. She used our home as a hotel, really. She didn't respect how I felt. She, she had an ability to make me angrier than anyone ever has before or since. Her blasé attitude pissed me off. I don't know whether she didn't fully understand how I felt or she just didn't care. Either way, I just couldn't handle it. Deeply rooted insecurity set in, jealousy, lack of trust, call it what you will. I felt like I was floating away from it, from my home, from everything we had whilst she was swimming towards her dreams. We, we separated for a while. I stayed in the flat. She moved back in with her parents and during certain conjugal visits, we'd soon argue and fight. I never hit her. I didn't. I destroyed my own home, smashed it to bits. Every time. It was clear it just didn't work, so I started seeing other people. Met someone through work, and she showed me what I was missing in my relationship and what I needed. What I knew I needed all along, it was all going well. Until, predictably, I was ordered back to the flat by the all too familiar voice. When I got there, she had a smile on her face that I hadn't seen for a while. I didn't trust it either. She sat me down took my hand and placed it on her stomach. If you've been affected by any issues raised in this episode, or if you're finding it hard to cope, please don't suffer in silence. We know how difficult it can be, and sometimes how impossible it seems to open up and talk. But by doing so, you could find the help you need, and it could save your life. Please research local advice hubs, community groups, and NHS initiatives in your area that will listen, advise, and support you through whatever you're going through. Alternatively, reach out to us directly. Contact us through social media, and get involved with the hashtag WeAreAllDave to share your story. You have been listening to Fenella Fudge, Claudia Greer, Alan Lear, Curtis Ledsham, Nadia Lee, Richard Oliver, James Phillips, Michael Prosper, Hannah Thompson, Ashley Tyler and David Tyson. Fifty Shades of Dave was written and produced by David Lee and recorded at Material Studios Liverpool and has been made possible with the help from the Martin Gallia Project and Involve Northwest. Thank you for listening.